Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church, and uh, glad to work with Chet TV here, Marlon and Company, to uh, put on some uh, messages for our community uh, that we understand are aired on Sundays, but other times as well. And and uh, so I just want to take a passage of scripture that uh, blessed my heart recently, and trust will bless yours as we um, consider it together today. Um, I'm a grandpa, uh, seven times over, and uh, what I find the worst part about being a grandpa is those kids don't call, and even my own kids don't call. I can phone them every day, they don't want to call back. Um, when I'm with them, we have lots of fun and they tell me they love me, but somehow I don't feel that they long to be around me, or at least to pick up the phone and, and make a call. So maybe they'll watch this and take a, I should phone them and tell them to do that. But. I found a passage of scripture where um, uh, Paul is talking and, and he said, he went on about a whole presentation, and at the end he says, and so they, they yearn for you. And I thought, well, that's pretty interesting, have somebody yearn for you, uh, long for you. And, and I thought, that, that's just got a message in itself, so I want to share that with you, uh, as if I may today. Uh, <clears throat> Paul is talking in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and he's talking about uh, the, the, the apostles were in Jerusalem, and they were working on sharing the gospel around there and whatever, and they got in need, and uh, they weren't working and they weren't whatever. So they sent out a message that uh, they could use some help. So the church at Corinth uh, had told Paul, well, we'd like to help. So if you come on over here, and uh, we'll, we'll give you uh, a bunch of money we've collected up. So Paul wants to talk to them, and he, he uses three times, well, I'm coming to get that money. I got a big wheelbarrow coming over there, and I uh, warned them three or four times, okay, get it together so that there's no um, uh, collecting money when I get there. Just have it ready to go, and then whatever. Time was of the essence. The people in Jerusalem were, were, were hungry. And so he goes on for that there, and talked about different elements of that giving that was there. And, but the, the elements of the giving is just so good in so many parts of life, to, if you want to be somebody that people love to be around and whatever, here's the things that he says. So I want us to just look at that briefly if we can uh, here. First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 9. So the first thing to, to have people uh, end up in this situation where people want to be around you is to have a heart of purpose. Have a heart of purpose. In verse 9, uh, he uh, makes this statement, verse 7, I'm sorry, he makes this statement. Says, Each one of us must do just as he has purposed in his heart. So, in this idea, he's purposed in his heart. The word purpose there is to choose for oneself. Uh, you must choose for yourself to be this kind of person. You want people to be, like to be around you. You must choose. And the Bible says if a man would have friends, he must show himself friendly. Who wants to hang around with somebody who's a grouchy old bear? And, uh, you know, I am my job. Sometimes I have to. But it's not fun. And uh, so, it, but he says here, he says, each one must do as he has purposed in his heart. And it's got the idea of choosing for oneself. To, it's, a, it's an active word. And I'm to choose for myself. I'm going to live with a purpose in my life. You, you hear lots of stories about that. Living with purpose, living on purpose, living intentionally. And words that they throw around. Uh, Joshua chapter 4, 15, way back in the Old Testament, Joshua says, but guys, Israel, God's been so good. If you were going to now try to enter the promised land and uh, you've entered the land and going to worship the false gods, well, I'm not going to say God bless you, but he says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's what it is to have a purposed heart. There's other elements. He describes it kind of this way uh, in some of the other things. So the purposed heart. He says, Paul talking about that giving idea. He says, um, not, not grudgingly. You want to give, not, not grudgingly. So that you always, um, uh, verse 7, he says, you have purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. Don't, be, don't give if you're going to give. Don't be involved if you, if you have to do it grudgingly. I hear kids say that, I went to church all my life, but it was under duress. That's grudgingly, dragged off to church, dragged to the woodshed. I, I, I had a drug problem. I was drugged to the woodshed. <laughs> I was, had the Board of Education applied to the seat of understanding. And, and so we, we grow up in life. If we're going to just be involved grudgingly, you might as well stand back. You're bringing all the uh, negativeness and, and whatever the world says and whatever. We don't need that negative. And so if you're going to be involved and purposeful, then you want to be a person of does stuff un, without grudging, doing it grudgingly. Uh, compulsion is necessity. Um, the Greek has two words for that word there, and it's got somebody to put in an arm lock. You put the arm lock with somebody up, it's, it's got to do with up, and it's got to do with the word arm, and the arm is up, and it's like behind your back. You're doing it of necessity. 
I work as a guard, and the police have to take some time and put an arm lock on the guy before they get the cuffs on him, and whatever. If you have to serve God or serve a process, be part of a project, grudgingly, arm locked in, you probably ought not be there. If you want to be somebody that people want to be around and care about and, and yearn to be near, then if your uh, purposed heart is grudgingly, I got to be like this, I want people to like me. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm arm locked, I got to be like this so people like me. You're missing the point of being the person that persons want to be around. And so uh, he says there, he says, uh, so a, a purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion of necessity, somebody's got your arm locked. But then he says, but God loves a cheerful giver. And that's so fun. Uh, I, I love at my church that my people love to give. And the Greek word is hilarious. Uh, it, it's, it's hilarious. People, uh, I, like, I, I like laughing. I like telling jokes. I like uh, clowning and, and whatever. And when it comes to giving, God wants us to give hilariously. God, you don't need my money, but I'm going to give it to you. You don't throw it on the floor. You, you give it respectfully to God and whatever. But he loves a heart that says, God, you've done so much for me. I want to give. And it just lights me up to be part of this process that I can give to your work. Um, I want to go back to 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 29. There's an interesting verse. For the Jewish people learned this. So Paul's talking to these people. It was already there. King David, moreover in my delight in the house of my God, the treasure of, I have of gold and silver, I give to the house of my God over and above all that I've provided already. He says, I give my treasure that I have. He's dying, he's getting old, whatever he's here. I just give the whole thing to the Lord, uh, to God's house. And then in verse 9, it says, And the people rejoiced because they offered so willingly, for they made their offerings to the Lord with a whole heart. And King David also rejoiced greatly. And so if we want to be people that have people yearn for us, whatever project is before us, I hear projects of trying to raise funds for Ukraine and the stuff there, whatever, only give. With, have a purpose to give, doing it ungrudgingly, doing not out of necessity, but willingly, and give cheerfully. When you do that, you've had a heart of purpose working for you. The second thing we want to find uh, from this passage here, uh, he, he, in verse 9 he talks here, he, he says, that makes this statement, he scattered abroad and he gave to the poor. Caring for others is, is a big way to have others yearn for you. If you don't care about anything but yourself, and there's a whole bunch of that in the world, you might be one. You might be Ask God to help you with that, because that's a serious problem. It's usually tied into arrogance and whatever. Not many people. No friends? Yeah, you only care about yourself. Who cares about you if you care only about yourself? They want to pat you on the back, but they'd be slapping your hand. And, and so they don't want to do that. Caring for others. And uh, uh, that word that Paul uses there, he scattered abroad and he gave to the poor, is right out of Psalm 112. Care about others rather than, and give to, give to the works rather and give hilariously rather than just be this person stuck on yourself, grudgingly doing everything like Scrooge in, the Chris, in that Christmas story. Uh, out of comp compulsion, arm lock, no. Stand back, don't. If you can't give hilariously, if you don't care for others, having somebody yearn to be around you, not the gift you're going to get. So the next thing is, uh, verse 8 in this passage makes this statement, and God is able to make all, a grace, uh, all grace abound to you. Let the things that you, the things of your heart towards having a purposeful heart, let it spring out of the grace of God. Pray to God, ask God to give you grace to be that type of person that others would like to be around. Just, you can ask God. God delights in that. He wants you to be a, a pleasant person. He wants you to not be full of yourself. He wants you to give to Him and to others hilariously, excitingly. And as you give, you know, the, the, the Gospel of Luke talks about, as we give to God, He gives to us, and He gives back, uh, pressed down and shaken together. I remember as a kid, we used to haul straw from the neighbors for the pigs, and you had to put it in, and you push it down, and you stepped on it, and pushed it down, you rolled it around, jumped it on, shook it down. And if you got oats, you wanted to shake it, shake it down, and whatever. All this pressed down and shaken together, He says, God says, that's how I give to the person who takes a little tiny penny, a few handful of shekels of coins, and we hear God, this is all that I have, or this is all I can spare right now, and he knows it. If you give it hilariously, lovingly, cheerfully, God's gonna bless you in return. You wanna care for others, let it spring from abounding grace in your heart. And uh, so he, he says there, he says, uh, it says um, and God so is able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything, 
you'll have sufficiently. God will take care of your needs. And you may have an, abundant, have an abundance in every good deed. And when we good do, do good things, it's what goes around comes around. We do good things, it comes back as good things. Some people call that karma. Well, that's in line with the scriptures. Uh, what a man sows, he's going to reap. And if you sow evil, there you're going to be. And so uh, one wants to be careful of that. Um, caring for others, springing out of a heart of, good, of grace from the work of God in our hearts, let us be mindful that every good thing is going to be promised to us and be, be caring about others. In verse 10 there, he goes on, as, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for, for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing. And, and then, look, look, beloved, he switches from sow, sowing for practical physical needs he steps into the spiritual realm this is and increase the harvest of your righteousness what is the harvest of righteousness it's when we have a heart that says god i want to be a, a person of purpose i want to be a person I, I choose i want to choose what is good for my community good for me good for my family and, and good for the world and as we choose to live like that a heart of purpose without being giving grudgingly without being forced into it by others because, but because, God, it makes sense to me I should be that kind of person. As we are, then we find that here God says, you'll have a harvest of righteousness. You'll have righteousness. You'll desire that which is right rather than that which is wrong. It says you'll have an increase uh, and increase the harvest of righteousness. And so you will be enriched, he says in verse 11. You'll be enriched in everything with the, um, uh, when you have this attitude. Enriched in everything. And so we'll carry on here quickly. Verse 11 it says, uh, So you'll be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through us produces thanksgivings to God. When we do stuff that others say, Thanks, God. I just said it at the start of the program. Thanks to Marlon and company. Chris, aren't you? <laughs> thanks to Marlon and Chris and those who put this program together. Thanks, thanks God. For these people in the ministry we have, to be on television, to share with people in lonely hours in the night, to turn on Chet TV, and they get a Pastor Bill talking, they get one of the other pastors talking. Thanks to God is the outworking of that there. And he says, this, this uh, uh, what we're doing, this ministry, this liturgy, which that, that Greek word there in ministry there is not the word for deacon, it's the word for service, a kind of a public service. For this public service is not only, uh, does not only fully supply the needs of the saints, but it's overflowing through thanksgiving to God. This service that you're offering this money, Paul says, doesn't just bless the, the apostles back home. It blesses everybody. And, uh, and, 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 those, and you're, it gives thanksgivings to God. When we do that, we're blessed. Verse 13, as we close, says, Because the proof given by this ministry. The proof is in the pudding. If you say you want to be a, purpose, a person of purpose, you want people to yearn to be around you and whatever. Take the purposeful heart. Don't do it grudgingly. Don't do it to be an arm lock. Uh, care about others. And he says, the proof is in the pudding. And look at how he reads it in verse 13. And he says, because of the proof given by this ministry, they will glorify God. Uh, the, if you work this out as you say you want to, when you do that and you say you want to, ask God's help, guess what? He's going to be there to help you do it. And he says, as you do, he says, they will glorify God for your obedience uh, to your confession of the gospel of Christ. You say you love Jesus and you hate others, you're lying. You're lying about loving Jesus because you can't do the both. Jesus says, if you love me, you've got to keep my commandments. You've got to love others. And he loved others so much that he gave himself. And then verse 14 closes it off. While they also by prayer on your behalf, now here's the word, they yearn for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. The surpassing grace of God is accomplished. You go read 2 Corinthians chapter 9 for yourself. Your heart will be blessed. Verses 1 to 15. He ends with 15. says, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. You in your service and the spiritual work. Amen.